All right, let's tackle these example questions for identifying quadrilaterals. Our first one, example A, asks us to determine what type of parallelogram T, U, and E is. So we know it's a parallelogram, so we know that E, N, and T, U are parallel, and we know that E, T, and N, U are parallel. The question is, is it a subclassification of a parallelogram? In other words, is it a rectangle or maybe a square? Um, so what we need to do is see if our matching sides here are either all the same length or come in pairs of the same length or if our diagonals here are the same. If the diagonals are the same then we know it's at least a rectangle and then we could find out whether or not the sides were the same after that. So let's take a look at the diagonals. Um, I went ahead and wrote in the uh, distance formula here. Recall the distance formula is the distance is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared based on the Pythagorean theorem. So I went ahead and wrote those numbers in. We have negative 6 minus 4, that's negative 10. And negative 10 squared would be 100. So we have 100 plus 7 minus 2, which is 5, squared is 25. So we need the square root of 100 plus 25, or the square root of 125. Then Tn is 0 minus negative 2, that's 2. Squared would be 4, plus 10 minus negative 1, that's 11. Squared would be 121. So that gives us square root of 125. So our two diagonals are indeed equal. So this is a rectangle, so we know that these meet here at 90 degree angles. The question then is, are these other two sides the same? Well, from u to n, we go down from 2 to 0 to negative 1, so we go down 3, and we go back from 4 to negative 2, so we go back 6. And then from t to u, we go over 4, and we go down from 10 to 2, so down 6. So this one has sides of 6 and 4, and this one has sides of 6 and 13. So I would say that doesn't give us a very good uh, chance of those being the same, which means that this is not a square, but it is indeed a rectangle. Okay, let's take a look at example B. Example B says a quadrilateral is defined by the four lines y equals 2x plus 1, y equals negative x plus 5, y equals 2x minus 4, and y equals negative x minus 5. Is the quadrilateral a parallelogram? Now remember, a parallelogram has two pairs of equal sides, of a parallel sides. And if sides are parallel, then they have equal slopes. Oh, that's an ugly E equal slopes. So all we need to do is find out the slopes of these lines and see if we have two pairs of equal slopes. Recall that standard formula, point slope formula, I'm sorry, slope intercept formula, is y equals mx plus b, where m is the coefficient of our x term, in other words, the number of x's that we have, and it represents the slope. So conveniently, all four of these are in that format, so all we need to do is see if we have pairs of slopes. Well, our first line has a slope of 2, and our third line has a slope of 2, so there's one pair. And then our second line has a slope of negative 1, and our fourth line has a slope of negative 1. So yeah, we do have two pairs of equal slopes. So we have a parallelogram. Cool. Okay, finally, example C. Example C says determine what type of quadrilateral RSTV is. Now usually I try and do the math on the screen, but we just don't have enough time for that. So what I've done is go ahead and I'll bring the math up here in just a second. But let me tell you again what we're doing. To see what kind of quadrilateral it is, it looks like this is probably a kite. And if it is a kite, then we know that this side 
is para or is that congruent with this side, and this side is congruent with this side. So all we have to do is use our distance formula to see if those are those lines are actually the same. And that's what I'll call up here. RS, so our top side here, uh, using the distance formula works out to be root 50. And then RV, which is its associated side here, is also root 50, so that works out well. And then ST, down the right-hand side over here, works out to be root 90. And its associated side, VT, also works out to be root 90. So yeah, we do have two pairs of adjacent sides that are congruent. So this is indeed a kite. And we know it's not a dart because all of our angles are punched out. In other words, this is a convex figure rather than a concave figure. That's all we got.